Audi's A7 Sportback offers a smarter, more unique option to executive segment buyers, and the Ingolstadt maker has put a lot of effort into updating this first generation version. It's more powerful and attractive thanks to revised engines, smarter looks and plenty of clever technology. The result is a high-tech combination of style and practicality. You might think that a full-sized executive car, say something like an Audi A6, a BMW 5 Series or a Mercedes E-Class, was a pretty desirable thing. Buyers in this segment, though, don't always agree, which is why, in recent times, so many of them have drifted away into upmarket SUVs and crossovers. In response, over the last few years, the prestige brands have produced more dynamic and individual four- and five-door designs to sell alongside their standard executive models. Here's Audi's offering, a much-improved version of their first-generation A7 Sportback. As before, the A6 underpinnings have been further developed with some of Audi's more exclusive technology, the kind of thing you'd find in the brand's luxury segment A8 saloon. This car, though, can be more efficient than any A8 if, like most buyers, you specify the entry-level two-wheel drive ultra-diesel version capable of family hatchback-style running cost figures. That'll be important for business segment buyers, but I have a suspicion that it's technology that'll really sell them this car. Much of this is optional, of course, but if you tick the right boxes for things like the high-tech matrix headlights and the advanced navigation and connectivity technology, this car really can be state-of-the-art. It'll need to be, of course, for rivals like BMW's 5 Series Gran Turismo and the Mercedes CLS class offer strong competition. Is this much-improved Audi a more desirable alternative? Let's find out. It doesn't take long behind the wheel to discover that the Sport in Sportback is there for a reason. Yes, it can feel rather remote if you're driving it lazily, but up your game and this A7 responds. It rides on a supple multi-link suspension system that enables Audi to offer a composed ride coupled with agile cornering ability. True, it never shrinks around you in the way some other big cars can manage, and the electrically assisted steering can be a little on the light side, but the chassis is keenly sharpened, offering keen drivers enough options to compensate. Under the bonnet, the engine range is based around 3-litre TDI V6 diesel power, an engine substantially revised for this improved model. For many, it'll be sufficient in its 218 PS state of tune, where there's the choice of the front-driven Ultra version or a Quattro four-wheel drive model. The Ultra makes 62 miles an hour from rest in 7.3 seconds en route to 143 miles an hour. Figures the all-wheel driven version improves to 6.8 seconds and 149 miles an hour. All other A7 models have Quattro traction as standard and are artificially limited to a 155 mile an hour maximum. These include the A7 variant I'm trying here, which uses a 272 PS version of the 3 litre TDI diesel and makes 62 miles an hour from rest in 5.7 seconds. If that's really not fast enough, then the flagship diesel version, the 320 PS 3 litre by TDI, should certainly satisfy. It makes 62 miles an hour in 5.2 seconds, which doesn't sound a lot faster than this car can manage, but the real difference lies in pulling power, which rises from 580 to 650 Newton meters. So a bi TDI model will feel a much faster thing on quick flowing roads. In fact, it's got more pulling power than the A7 model's standard seven speed S-Tronic auto gearbox can cope with. So for bi TDI models, a tougher eight speed Tiptronic auto transmission has to be fitted. On to the petrol alternatives. Given that over 90% of A7 Sportback sales will be diesel driven, it's actually a surprise to find that there are as many as three versions that you can fuel from the green pump. 
the options start with a 333 PS supercharged 3 litre TFSI unit borrowed from Audi's S4, offering 440 Newton metres of torque and rests to 62 in just 5.3 seconds. Then come the sporting 4 litre TFSI variants, the S7 with its output boosted from 420 to 450 PS and the mighty 560 PS RS7 flagship model. In the S7, 62 miles an hour flashes by in 4.6 seconds, a figure reduced to just 3.9 seconds in the RS7. In the RS7, as with that by TDI model I mentioned, there's so much torque, 700 Newton meters of it, that the stouter eight-speed Tiptronic auto gearbox is once again needed. I mentioned earlier that at the foot of the range there is a two-wheel drive option for this car, but for me it really seems a pity to enjoy A7 ownership without Quattro technology, especially as even with four-wheel drive this car still manages to return better running costs figures than its two-wheel drive rivals. So equipped you can simply turn into a corner Enjoy the driver oriented 6040 rearward bias and keep your foot down as various computers distribute torque around the chassis as needed. Now how sophisticated that process is depends upon the various buttons you've ticked when specifying your car. Standard is an improved torque vectoring system which works through the turns to counter both understeer and wheel spin by lightly micro-braking whichever front wheel is threatening to lose grip. As a result, the car's kept planted through the tightest corner and yet fired on from bend to bend in a manner that'll be even more impressive if you've specified the optional sports differential. Now, this sits on the rear axle, uh, distributing power optimally between the back wheels during tight cornering, literally pushing the car through the bend and really delivering you a car capable of turning into corners like a shark turning towards a meal. With all of this kit fitted, this Audi becomes an instantly more engaging driver's car than its most obvious rivals, and one that's a lot more fun to push hard than I expected it would be. But of course, what's really important with this car is not B-road blasting, but highway cruising, which is where you'd really appreciate the optional adaptive air suspension system. At slower speeds on poorer services, this setup isn't quite as magic carpet-like as that you'll find on a rival Mercedes. But pick up the pace and the package really comes into its own, cushioning you with pillowy softness and automatically lowering the car at high speeds or when you're pushing on. The system works through the same self-explanatory five modes of the Drive Select electronic chassis tuning system, comfort, dynamic, and efficiency being the main ones with individual if you want to tailor the setup yourself and auto if you can't be bothered to choose. These appropriately alter throttle and gear change responses to suit relaxed, uh, performance orientated or efficiency prioritized styles of driving. Steering feedback too, though that's still, uh, well, a bit vague, even if you pay extra for the dynamic steering option. The rest of the A7 Sportback experience is luxury personified, with almost everything programmable to your mood. Highlights? Well, it's hard to pick one thing, but if I had to choose, I'd go for the achingly clever optional Matrix LED headlamps. Here, the party trick is the way they can stay on high beam all the time while using a camera mounted at the top of the windscreen to react to other traffic by dimming or turning off individual LED clusters. That means other motorists won't be dazzled, but both sides of the road around you and the oncoming way ahead will still be completely full beam lit. The system can even detect animals and also pedestrians who get a pulsing LED flash alerting your approach. Once you've driven regularly at night with the system, take it from me, you won't want to be without it. This is certainly a very imposing piece of design. Is it beautiful? 
Well, that'll depend on your definition and possibly on the amount of money you have to spend on the finished spec. As before, the front end is long with the roofline low and athletically taut. And this single tornado crease line is eye-catching, starting gently by the headlight, then wrapping around the wheel arch before getting bolder and more defined as it progresses to finally meet an aggressively chiselled rear end that Audi reckons is reminiscent of a classic sports car. The R8 style LED daytime running lights, the retracting headlight washers, these intricately finished door mirrors and the wrap over aluminium bonnet are all further neat touches. The changes made to this improved first generation version are subtle ones, mainly centred around a trademark single frame front grille that now looks wider with six crisper corners and eight chromed struts for extra emphasis. There are revised air inlets in the redesigned bumper and the LED wedge shaped headlights have also been restyled and can now react to almost every conceivable nighttime road condition if ordered with optional segment leading matrix LED technology that's recognisable by its brilliant crystal shine. But as ever with an expensive Audi, it's what's underneath all this tinsel that really ought to command your attention. Over 20% of the bodywork is fashioned from aluminium, which helps to explain why this car is over 250 kilograms lighter than a rival BMW 5 Series Gran Turismo. In fact, everywhere you look on this A7, the technology keeps on coming. Take the rear section with its lovely dynamic rear indicators, high-level LED light strip and automatically extending spoiler, which on the move rises at 80 miles an hour and retracts again at 50 miles an hour. The hatch opens electrically as standard to reveal a 535 litre space that's easily enough to fit a couple of golf bags in lengthwise. An optional convenience pack allows you to make better use of it, including a reversible boot mat, tie down points, uh, a luggage net and a through load facility for longer items like skis. Now, if you need more space, then pushing forward the split folding rear seat opens up as much as 1,390 litres. But a car like this is more about prestige than practicalities. How would it make you feel once you've entered through the lovely frameless doors and taken a seat inside? Well, let's start on the rear seat, which family folk will need to remember will be sculpted only for two people in the sporting S7 and RS7 models. Fortunately, across the rest of the range these days, you get a proper three seat space as standard, though inevitably the middle perch isn't one you're gonna want to be confined to for very long. Legroom's no problem though, uh, with almost as much space to stretch out for the two outer passengers as you'll find in Audi's huge A8 saloon. Up front, there's the usual luxurious blend of craftsmanship fused with technology, with a wraparound dash fashioned in a wide arch that spans the cabin, encircling the slim, low instrument panel. You view it through a leather-trimmed three-spoke multifunction steering wheel that reveals large black-faced dials featuring clear classic graphics and red needles. Not that you'll need to look at these if you've opted for a head-up display that projects key driving information directly into your line of sight at the bottom of the windscreen. The latest version of the excellent MMI control interface marshals the ancillary controls on a colour 6.5 or 8 inch display screen that glides out from the dash, helping the A7 do a better job than most rivals of keeping the dreaded button clutter to a minimum. I also like the clever optional touchpad on which drivers can trace letters with a finger to input destinations to the satellite navigation system or maybe the stereo controls. A pity that you have to do it with your left hand though. And the superbly supported multi-adjustable seats, the bolsters of which are trimmed in lovely supple Milano leather. Around these, if budget permits, 
you can specify almost any kind of finishing cabin trim it's possible to imagine. Either something quite modern like this, or maybe ash, myrtle or oak veneer finishes, offering up a feeling of the kind of modern Bentley that draws on much of this A7 Sportback model's engineering. Pricing for mainstream A7 Sportback models is tightly grouped in the 45 to 60,000 pound bracket. As for the properly sporting petrol models, allow a £65,000 budget for the S7 and an £85,000 budget for the super quick RS7 flagship variant. Whatever your choice, the money being asked here is well above the amount Audi requires for an equivalent version of its A6 saloon or Avant when fitted with the same engines. That difference, which could be anything from around £8,000 to as much as £15,000 depending on the models you're comparing, is partly, but by no means completely, explained by two facts. Firstly, that the auto gearbox you have to pay extra for on many A6 variants is standard on an A7. And secondly, that this Sportback has a different trim structure that gives you more standard equipment. Most potential A7 Sportback buyers will be confining their attentions to the bottom of the range, probably on the only two-wheel drive variant, the efficient 3-litre TDI Ultra with 218 PS. There's a premium of around £1,800 to graduate up from this and get yourself much the same car with Quattro four-wheel drive. And from there, you can also choose to spend a further £2,500 premium, taking your expenditure to just over £50,000, and get your A7 3-litre TDI Quattro with a Pokia 272 PS output. This is the version I've been trying here. Whatever their choice of A7 variant, many buyers will want to find the extra £2,800 or so necessary to progress from standard SE executive spec to the more dynamic S-line trim. At this level, the engine range widens to include a desirable 320 PS 3-litre by TDI Quattro diesel model flagship and a minority interest 3-litre TFSI turbo petrol variant. On to the value proposition. In the same way that Audi intends this A7 Sportback to be a more interesting premium alternative to an ordinary executive segment A6 saloon or Avant, the Ingolstadt company's two closest rival brands have also done much the same thing. So, for example, if you're bored with the idea of a BMW 5 Series, the Munich maker will offer you a larger, stylized hatchback version, the 5 Series Gran Turismo. But, though more spacious than this A7, it's also uglier, less efficient and less dynamic, and the price savings slight. Audi buyers looking at top 3-litre by TDI S7 or RS7 A7 Sportback models would probably be more tempted by a more stylish BMW 5 Series spin-off, the 6 Series Grand Coupe Saloon. But to get that car, you'd be looking at spending around 20% more. You'll also be spending more if you want to look at the Mercedes alternative, the E-Class based CLS model, offered either in saloon or shooting brake estate form. Pitch one of these against this A7 and you'd be looking at paying somewhere between two to three thousand pounds more model for model. Audi, predictably, uh, dismisses comparisons like the ones I've just been making, contending that there isn't really anything quite like this car. It certainly isn't elsewhere in the conventional executive segment. As usual, it comes down to personal preference. If, having considered the alternatives, you are convinced by the A7 Sportback proposition, then you're going to want to know just how generous Audi has been when it comes to standard spec. Is there really enough here to help justify that substantial price premium over an A6? Well, you be the judge. Even entry-level SE executive models get automatic transmission, alloy wheels of at least 19 inches in size, a dynamic rear spoiler on the power-operated boot lid, front and rear parking sensors, an alarm, all-weather LED headlamps, auto headlamps and wipers, LED tail lights, and striking dynamic rear indicators. On the move, you get the Audi Drive Select system that enables you to switch the throttle, steering and gear shifting to suit the road you're on and the mood you're in. 
Inside, there's beautiful Milano leather trim on seats that are heated and electrically adjustable in the front. Plus, you get deluxe four-zone air conditioning, a three-spoke leather-trimmed multifunction steering wheel with gear shift paddles, aluminium dash inlays, cruise control, an auto-dimming rearview mirror, the keyless go system with its stop-start button, and hill hold assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Best of all, perhaps, are all the functions controllable via the electrically retractable 6.5-inch infotainment screen. From here, you can deal with Bluetooth connectivity, a 10-speaker sound system with DAB radio, and an SD card-based MMI navigation system. I'd think carefully before deciding to pay the extra to upgrade to S-Line trim. Do that and you get larger 20-inch wheels, softer black Valcona full leather trim, front sports seats and lowered sports suspension that you can choose to do without if you're worried about spiralling chiropractor bills. The key S-Line trim package inclusion though can be found in the clever Matrix LED headlamps. These more powerful lights with their unique crystal-like shine are always one step ahead of you, moving with the corners and adjusting to the kind of road that you're on. And tempting options? Well, of course, there are plenty. Key features you should think about to start with include the magic carpet-like progress possible courtesy of adaptive air suspension. If you like a sportier drive, then the optional dynamic steering system's certainly worth trying. If you're the sort that'll appreciate it, then you probably need to ask your dealer about the optional sports differential that transfers torque between the rear wheels on quattro variants through tight corners to fire you from bend to bend. Now, it's rightly standard on S7 and RS7 variants. Other features that you might want to consider include extended leather trim around the cabin, a powered sunroof, powered door closure, a park assist parking system that can steer you into spaces, and a head-up display. Practical touches are provided by a convenience pack, which includes a reversible boot mat, uh, tie-down points, a luggage net, a through-load facility for long items, twin rear window blinds, plus cup holders and twin 12-volt sockets for rear seat folk. And talking of seats, well, there's a huge choice of them, with optional front heating and ventilation too. There's even an optional massaging function. I've got sports seats here, but you could also go for even more supportive super sports chairs, or perhaps the pillowy soft 18-way adjustable comfort seats. There's also a night vision setup that now recognises animals, a TV tuner, and a wonderful 14-speaker 600-watt Bose surround stereo system. If my company was paying, I might even want to upgrade to the 15-speaker, 15-channel, 1200-watt Bang & Olufsen advanced sound system. And all of that is before you get to the particularly clever electronic connectivity items that really do set this A7 range apart. Upgrade the standard sat-nav setup to MMI Navigation Plus status and you get yourself a piece of technology Audi's very proud of. A second generation modular infotainment system based around a cutting edge Tegra 30 processor. Here, extra highlights include a DVD drive, voice or touchpad controlled command functionality, and a 64 gigabyte flash memory drive. You get a larger eight inch retractable infotainment screen to operate all of this, but for navigation at least, you won't necessarily need to keep looking at it, as the system also includes a second color map display in the middle of the instrument cluster, so there's less need to take your eyes off the road. Another reason MMI Navigation Plus is worth having as an extra is that it gives you access to all the additional cleverness of the Audi Connect package, a data transmission module that establishes a connection to the internet and creates in your car a Wi-Fi hotspot. This brings into play features such as navigation with images from Google Earth, a Google points of interest search function with voice control, and a web radio setup so that you can tune into stations around the world. 
you can access special in-car versions of your Facebook and Twitter pages. And it's possible to read, write and send text messages and emails. Online media streaming gives access to millions of music tracks. Plus, there's also a clever Audi online traffic information system that uses live traffic information to reroute you around jams. Plus, the setup can also deliver parking information, displaying details on parking lots and parking garages almost anywhere you're likely to go. Truly, this is motoring in the 21st century. If you're specifying your A7 and looking at the desirable MMI Navigation Plus and Audi Connect setups I've been talking about, then it's worth knowing that you can get them together included in an optional technology pack, also bundled up with the head-up display and what's called the Audi Phone Box, which enables you to charge your smartphone and boost its signal via the vehicle antenna. Or you could go even further and get the Technology Pack Advanced package. As well as everything I've just mentioned, plus heated power folding mirrors, this also gives you the pick of Audi's most desirable safety features. Adaptive cruise control with stop and go and pre-sense front, that's a package that will automatically and almost eerily regulate your speed using predictive sat-nav data to respond to traffic conditions and remotely speed you up or slow you down at anywhere between 0 and 150 miles an hour. Then there's side assist with pre-sense rear, a system that works about 37 miles an hour and stops you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another vehicle. And Audi Lane Assist to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. Elsewhere on the options list, other neat extra cost safety touches you could consider include a less sophisticated version of the PreSense technology, which in basic form will automatically tension the front seat belts and close both the windows and, if fitted, the power sunroof if the ESP system indicates that the car is about to skid. You can also specify a traffic sign detection setup that pictures speed signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. Of course, not all the safety features you'll need will cost you extra, or should they for this kind of money. Standard features include the usual Isofix child seat fastenings, anti-whiplash head restraints and a tyre pressure loss indicator, plus twin front, side and curtain airbags and of course a complete roster of electronic acronyms including the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control. There's also a rest recommendation feature that monitors your driving for drowsiness, alerting you if necessary to stop for a restorative coffee. Running costs for the A7 are certainly aided by the sleek sportback shape with its low 0.28 CD aerodynamic drag factor. But a bigger contributor to the cause are the many lightweight aluminium body parts that make this car significantly less weighty than conventional steel bodied rivals. As a result, an entry level two wheel drive version is over 250 kilograms or the weight of three fully grown adults lighter than a directly comparable rival BMW 530D Gran Turismo. That's quite a difference and as a result the weight saving theme plays a major part in the class leading running cost returns this car can offer. Go as many potential buyers will for the entry level 3 litre TDI Ultra version and you'll be getting a very efficient car indeed. SCR, or Selective Catalyst Reduction, means that the Ultra meets Euro 6 emission standards and earns so-called clean diesel status within the Audi range. More importantly, this model's figures suggest that you'll be able to achieve 60.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle while putting out 122 grams per kilometer of CO2. To give you some perspective, that's about 10% better than you'd get from a directly comparable Mercedes CLS 250 CDI, and over 20% better than the showing possible from BMW's far feebler 520D Gran Turismo model. 
What's even more impressive is that this Audi still maintains its running cost advantage over these two competitors when equipped with the four-wheel drive system that neither Mercedes or BMW offer in this segment. Take the 3.0-litre TDI Quattro model I've been trying here in 272 PS guys. This variant, like its 218 PS stablemate, manages 54.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 136 grams per kilometre of CO2, which means that compared to direct two-wheel drive rivals like BMW's 535D Gran Turismo or Mercedes CLS 350 CDI, it'll put out 20 to 30 grams per kilometre less of CO2 and take you nearly seven miles further on every gallon. And further still, of course, when you've the smug pleasure of relying on that four-wheel drive system during the next snowy snap. On to petrol power. The minority interest 3.0-litre TFSI variant is also very competitive against its rivals on the balance sheet, returning 37.2 miles to the gallon and 176 grams per kilometre of CO2. All well and good, but where you might expect the A7 Sportback range to suffer from a cost perspective is when it comes to the returns of the big twin-turbo 4-litre petrol TFSI V8 used in the sporting S7 and RS7 models, in which case you might be surprised. Thanks to a clever cylinder deactivation system that disengages four of the eight cylinders under part load to maximise fuel efficiency, the S7 manages 30.4 miles to the gallon and 215 grams per kilometre, while even in the RS7 you'll manage 29.7 miles to the gallon and 221 grams per kilometre. Overall then, an impressive showing across the board that's further aided by all the usual efficiency initiatives you'd now expect from a car of this kind. The stop-start system that cuts the engine in traffic, brake energy recuperation which recycles energy you'd otherwise lose when braking or cruising, a climate control system that can be used in a highly economic eco mode. The Efficiency setting you can choose on the Drive Select Vehicle Dynamics system, a gear shift indicator, and an efficiency program you'll find on the onboard computer that gives you fuel saving tips. What else? Well, residual values sit somewhere between BMW and Mercedes, and insurance is pitched between groups 33 and 34 for the two wheel drive 3 litre TDI Ultra and group 40 for the 3 litre TDI and 3 litre by TDI Quattro models. When it comes to petrol variants, you're looking at group 41 for the 3 litre TFSI, group 43 for the S7, and group 47 for the RS7. Further running cost assistance is provided by a fixed price servicing plan that can cover you for three years or 30,000 miles. And you can also extend the unremarkable three years, 60,000 mile warranty to either four or five years at extra cost. Service intervals are decently long too, every 19,000 miles or two years. days when upmarket cars with hatchbacks just didn't sell are long forgotten thanks to Audi and its various Sportback models. This A7 is the best looking of the lot. It's imperious sweeping styling, clothing all the qualities that make the brands more established A6 and A8 ranges so successful. Effortlessly elegant design, advanced petrol and diesel engines and the option of quattro all-wheel drive. An appealing combination for sure, but with all that said, it's still true that you've still really got to like Audis to like this car. More specifically, you've got to like A7s, for this is very much an evolution of the original first generation design rather than anything dramatically different. Not that this revised version's changes aren't significant, they had to be for this model to be able to get cleverer, more efficient, and better able to compete with its Teutonic rivals. It had to be more uh, Vosprung Duk Technik. It is. Every part of this car has been designed with a thoroughness that's deeply impressive, if sometimes rather clinical. Of course, the end result is hardly inexpensive and you'll need to spend plenty on options to fully sharpen its driving manners. Still, if that's not an issue, then you're likely to find this A7 very desirable indeed. 
It is perhaps the definitive expression of how Audi wants you to perceive its brand. Not all executive decisions should be difficult. Here's one you should enjoy making.